COVID lockdowns, China, I don't know. We, don't, we can't figure out what they're doing to their economy or their people. That's for them to decide. But the rates that you're getting, I mean, have crashed, right? One, one to 2K in what used to be 20,000? Yeah, there's no question, Brian. First off, great to be here. But we've seen significant changes, specifically in the global forwarding part of our business in terms of the economics of moving goods on a global basis, whether it be in the Trans-Pacific you know, to the West Coast. That's clearly the area where we've seen the biggest downturn in terms of pricing. I guess the good news for consumers and for businesses is that there's more available capacity now on the water. And when we talk about inflation, you know, we're, we're, we're removing some of those costs that are, that are driving inflation. Yeah, I mean, is this a short-term thing with China because of all these lockdowns? Or when you plan, uh, how, how do you plan? Because it's like your business is almost subject to the whim of the Chinese president. Well, you know, Brian, part of the strength of C.H. Robinson is that we're a non-asset-based, asset-light business that have, has a leading, a leading presence not only in the trans-Pacific trade lane, but also domestically here in both truckload and less than truckload, and we continue to diversify our forwarding business into other parts of the global forwarding landscape. You know, specifically in this quarter alone, in our new business that we brought on, 60% of it existed outside of Trans-Pacific. Domestically in the United States, what are we seeing? I know there was a huge inventory build, Bob, where everybody, you know, you couldn't get anything, then you bought everything. So I, I don't know if the slowdown is some sort of economic slowdown or just because everybody overstocked an inventory. What do you see? I, it's the right question to ask, and there's no question in looking back that we absolutely saw a pull forward in inventory in the first half of the year, which has provided us with an extremely muted peak season. And, and that, in turn, has really driven down pricing across the board, whether it be surface transportation here domestically. You know, we've seen spot market rates come down north of 30 percent. We've seen the, the pricing come down on the water, as you described. And we're also seeing pricing declines in, in air freight as well. So there's no question that that inventory buildup, you know, occurred earlier in the year. And I think it's yet to be seen as we progress through the balance of this year and into Chinese New Year to see if there's any material changes in the overall transportation landscape. Yeah, what, what about the operating cost landscape? I, I may or may not have some people I know that work at your company. They heard something about operating cost reductions this morning. If you're an employee, it's got to make you a little bit, you know, your ears perk up. Yeah, no question. You know, on our, on our call this morning, we talked about the fact that, you know, given the, the slowing freight markets and the change in demand that we're seeing in our model, we do need to take some proactive costs, some proactive cost reduction actions, which will you know, employ over the course of the next four quarters. But we're looking at, at ne the need to reduce our overall operating expenses by about $150 million over that time. You know, again, the good news about our business is we are asset light, and so we're not encumbered with, with hard assets that we have, to, we have to focus on in a time like this, and we can continue to dri drive strong shareholder returns throughout, throughout the cycle. Yeah, and, and I'm assuming that ships, shipping, all that stuff is taken care of. But how close are you watching this potential rail strike, Bob? Yeah, we're watching it closely. I mean, intermodal or rail makes up less than 1% of our total revenues. And so we're probably yeah, looking more closely. Yeah, but it gets the stuff to the ports and the airports. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's what we're looking at is kind of the, the secondary impact of, of the rail strike. I mean, even though we've got clear, we've done a nice job of clearing the ports in, in the West Coast, we still have delays in terms of getting containerized goods out of the ports to yep. where they're where they're meet, needing to go based on some of the rail labor issues. And we're still about 30 percent below where we were pre-pandemic in terms of rail yep. labor. Yep. And that's got to get solved for.